Yeah. You're wrong. Hi, this is John Berger, and today I want to offer you ways to spice up your drumming. We're all familiar with the use of ghost notes, playing low volume, smaller notes to add pulse and action, interest, uh, make our drumming more interesting, shall we say, things like this. So there are other ways that we can spice things up. One common way is to combine a stick and a brush, and you can play some of those 16th note goat-like ghost-like patterns with the brush and the stick for the backbeat. You get something like this. In essence, what drummers are doing when they're playing ghost notes by adding this underlying pulse, it's a form of linear drumming. You have two different parts going. You have sort of this light 16th note pulse happening or an ostinato happening while everything else is playing. Okay. Really what they're doing is they're emulating a percussionist. Okay. And uh, so we bring up the shaker. A lot of drummers are doing acoustic unplugged things, playing in smaller clubs and learning to use a shaker, I, I really recommend any drummer to get a hold of a shaker and practice this. It's a little bit challenging at first because drummers are not used to moving one hand back and forth. They're used, used to coordinating things up and down. So it takes some practice back and forth with a shaker. I'll talk about that a little bit later. So what I'm going to do now is replacing these 16th note ghost notes with a shaker. Practice, you want to get a hold of a shaker and you want to practice just the shaker alone, okay? Going back and forth, okay? And I recommend that you count while you're playing one and two and three and four and one and the two and the three and the four and the. The one thing to keep in mind is where those beats are placed forward and back. Okay, this is very important to the shaker. It will help really help you with coordinating with the rest of your limbs. Okay, one and two and. So you got forward and back with eighth notes. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. Focus on which strokes are forward, which strokes are back along with the counts and it's really going to help you line things up the same way you coordinate, you know, any drumming exercise or pattern. Okay. And one other thing to think about is where you start, okay? To, to, to place one on the beat, I'm going, to play, I'm going to start backwards. I'm going to start back. And one, two, and three, and four, and... Okay, you hold the shaker straight, straight up in the air, okay? And really what you're doing is you're trying to throw the beads inside against the surface get a nice clean sound to keep your hand kind of stiff. So it takes some practice. You've got all kinds of different shakers. You've got a, this is sort of a louder shaker. This one is a soft shake. There's a lot more inside so it's a little bit easier to play this. Um, all different shaped shakers. You can just experiment. Remo makes these shakers shaped like fruit just for fun but they're all, all sound beautiful. Uh, there's, there's egg shakers, which are very soft. The other thing is, you sometimes going to find yourself playing in a small club, okay? And even what you think is soft drumming is way too loud. So it's a very good idea to experiment. Uh, great studio drummer Jim Keltner became very famous for playing drumming patterns, not jazz traditional jazz stuff, but playing like drum patterns using using brushes. 
So it's a good idea to learn how to how to play very very softly and even to play like you know typical rock or funk patterns, you know. Okay, and you can get creative by using percussion. Um, instead of drumming, jumping in with sticks, you can maybe start a tune with just the shaker. Okay, maybe we would we would play eighth notes alone on the hi hat. You can maybe do the same thing with the shaker. And to make it a little more interesting, add some different spice instead of just coming in with the hi-hat. Maybe add a tambourine. Then you can add the hi-hat as the song builds up. And the bass drum. you can add sticks. Of course, we have multi-rods, which enables us to play a little bit louder, but still not overwhelm the band. This is also a good thing to have in your stick bag. You might get to a club and your drums are tuned really nicely, you even have them, you know, muted, but still too loud, you might want to try, try multi-rods. You can experiment with a stick and a brush, you know, maybe the multi-rod multi for the snare drum. So, adding spice to this, this sounds really, really musical and uh, interesting, but again, we can maybe, before we even introduce the brush on the cymbal, we might try a shaker. whole pattern just really came alive with all this utilizing all these different tools. Another thing to think about, this is really thinking like a percussionist, is what, what percussionists refer to as choreography, is if you're going to work these parts out, make sure you know where these things are. You know, just having a stick bag can be kind of dangerous. You might want to have them on the floor tom, you might want to have them on a, on a drum case or a music stand with, with a towel and have all these tools ready, okay, and figure out how to make the transition. You know, just like you're playing jazz and, and you're going from sticks to brushes, you might have them on your lap or on the floor tom. You want to figure out a way to make the transition. You know, maybe a hot hat splash or a drum fill with one hand, and you have to work all that stuff out in advance. You know, how am I going to get to my shaker? Sometimes you can just drop it on the floor. Maybe later on in the song, you want to go back to the percussion. You know, if it's a small setting, maybe if there's a bass solo, you can go back, you know, if you're playing with rods, you can go back to the sticks just for the bass solo. Another wonderful shaker that I, is one of my favorite, this is called a kashishi. This is a, a Brazilian instrument, a basket shaker. There's a lot of really cool levels on this because it has a very hard surface in the bottom and the shaker in the top, so you can kind of combine all these things and really get a lot happening, a lot of patterns with backbeat. Kashishi. These are really large ones, they're really loud, they make all different sizes. Really wonderful thing to, to uh, check out, experiment with. Another thing is we're used to playing nice soft patterns on the cymbals and on the bells, okay? A lot of what that sound is imitating is the triangle. Okay, this is another thing you might want to experiment with is, you know, getting a hold of a triangle. You can do choked and open sounds and get really nice patterns to add to a song. Maybe the intros of a song. 
Instead of an eighth row pattern with a backbeat, you can add that similar kind of concept to the triangle. My good friend Billy Miller invented this uh, triangle machine. It's called the Miller machine. Uh, this enables you to, to play the triangle without picking up a beater. So you can have your hands free to, to maybe play the drums. Okay. He invents another one for the finger uh, symbol. Okay, nice little colors that you can add. So, uh, you know, these are a lot of ideas to enable you to uh, expand your palette. New spices you can add to your drumming and really, uh, you know, make it a lot more musical and interesting. So, uh, you can uh, check, check, um, check out my uh, website, johnberger johnbergerdrums.com. It's J-O-N-B-E-R-G-E-R, -E -E drums.com. It's plural. And... Uh, Keep on playing.